everybody this is coach leslie your certified creatives coach i am here to have in session with vocalists and musicians from around the world it's just a impromptu chat just to find out who people are what they have going on and how to connect with them and to support them and today's guest is mr nate b Welcome, welcome, Nate B. Thank you, thank you. I, thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm pleased to finally connect with you. Yes, um, you are one of Nashville's finest, and your name definitely rings outside of Nashville as Nashville finest. So we're just going to find out just a little bit more about you today. Okay. So if you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and your musical background. Okay. Um... I'm 35. <laughs> uh, I was born in 1988. And um, when did my journey start? I was the kid, the only kid at the family reunion that sung a gospel song. Wow. And out of all the songs I sang, I sang, I did all the parts. Um, um, hallelujah, salvation. Then I did all praise. Then I did all, I did all the parts. <laughs> um, and I think that was kind of like, my beginning, my mom says all the time, I was not shy. I just was like, I'll, I'll sing. And so that became the foundation of it. Um, I went to arts uh, middle school, arts magnet, okay. went to arts high school. Um, that pretty much opened my mind. Once I got to, to high school, late middle school, I had figured out that there were other denominations. Mm. I was a Baptist kid. Oh, was a Baptist yeah. kid. And so uh, my seventh grade teacher, at that time, we could not have a gospel choir at the school. So she created like a backdoor choir, like an after-school thing. And um, we were singing everywhere. We were doing corporate events. And she moved from Nashville, and I ended up being over the group. Okay. okay. And so that was kind of like, I was pushed into that. And so we did that for a while. And then I got to high school. Uh, I officially started my own. My own group. Um, and the group was called Next Level before. I changed the name to Forgiven, and I kind of got stuck with it. And uh, believe it or not, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I love animals. I love animals. And I kind of got stuck with that. It was easy to do in church. Um, I don't even know how I knew how to take parts. Um, but I was directing. I started playing the drums first. Mm -hmm. The organ, I played for the milk chorus, so it was the easy choir. <laughs> so okay. I played for them. Um, and it just became um, a thing. It became serious. And I was just like, I guess I'm going to do this, you know? Wow. Um, but that's pretty much the, the beginning of kind of how everything started. Okay. Well, what? Okay. So being a veter veterinarian, mm -hmm. that, <laughs> that's so key. I think sometimes as creatives, when there are other things that we want to do, we don't understand how that ties into mm -hmm. what we do. Because to be a choir director and have a successful choir, you mm -hmm. must care for the people who sing for you. Facts. Absolutely. And being a veterinarian is a is a heart thing. It's a passion. Yeah, it is. That's it not is. to say, oh, I just want to do it. Right. <laughs> you really have to love animals. And Seriously. You know, so that's that's really interesting. Wow. Yes, so that's a great beginning. And Big Baptist, that's a good foundation because you got those hymns in there. Yeah. And you know what? I Believe it or not, people do not believe this. My home church did not sing hymns. We were a Baptist church, so we did more devotional songs. Okay. Okay. And, you know, of course, we did choir music. So I did not completely get into the hymns until... I was an adult. That, that which is, which is, that you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, I knew of them, but I did not get invested until um, pretty much the Hymns Project. You know, once that was a thing, it was because of me being introduced um, and kind of experiencing hymns on my own. Right. Um, and so yeah, being, a, being a Baptist kid showed me um, a lot and stretched me a lot because I ended up being able to do music at other churches. 
Mm-hmm. I, I got to see how structure was outside of what I was accustomed to. So mm-hmm. it, the Baptist church, it built me up very, very well, for yeah. sure. The Baptist church will give you structure. That's yes. Whether it's good or bad. Yep. I, I came up in a, in a Pentecostal church, but family was rooted in the Baptist uh, faith. Yes. And everybody that came to the Pentecostal church I went to came from the Baptist church. So wow. we were a mixture of structure and singers. And yeah. everybody in the church I grew up could sing. Everybody. Well, they came from community choir. Gotcha, gotcha. A classically trained community choir. Ooh, okay. Everybody could sing. So what made you kind of pivot into the recording or the music industry side of that and when you explain this explain it as simply as possible because I want people to take away the understanding that it's not something that you just do because everybody else is doing mm-hmm. you really have to be a certain way I really really still have a hard time with with questions like that because I don't know when I, I guess, crossed or when it became an industry thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when we first started, I mean, we were young. I started my group when I was 16. So we were singing every weekend at every event. Uh, it was fun. And then it got really serious. And then it turned into me writing music. Hey, we should record a song. So I think by the time I recorded our first single, it was, called, it was a song called Made to Worship. I think things changed at that moment when I recorded music. Um, people were interested in management and all of that. Um, but I don't think I really tapped in until um I would say probably my first full album. And I was like, oh, this is kind of a real thing. Although people had kind of handled me like an artist, mm-hmm. I've never taken that title and made it my identity, if that makes sense. Um yes. it's just kind of been something I've kind of embodied and prior to I guess being an artist, when we first started, we were singing background at Stellar's. Mm-hmm. We were doing studio sessions. So those things, I actually would rather be a background singer. <laughs> okay, let me just, I would rather sit in the room, produce vocals, put all this stuff, rather than stand in front of people and yeah. and talk and sing, you know? Um, but all of those components kind of have, have made the journey a little less stressful. Mm-hmm. Just kind of knowing that... Um, Knowing my root makes this enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes it enjoyable. And I think it's it's definitely not something you wake up and want to do. You're right. <laughs> it, it's, it just comes with too many. And I, I feel like um, everything that I've experienced, good and bad, is because of God orchestrating it and because it was not on a bucket list. Mm-hmm. It was, I, none of that. Like, it was, I just didn't write stuff. Oh, I want to be. This, I want to get an award for that. Never. Right. I've never had those dreams. Never wrote it down. So God has literally kind of like put me in those spaces. And this is kind of like, oh, well, let me just do it. Because, you know, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been interesting. Yeah, I'm sure. Organic. <laughs> Always. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So to, some of your musical influences, um, tell me some of your influences and how they have kind of shaped the style that you've gone for. I've always been a choir head. So anything, I mean, Ricky, Hezzy, James Hall, um, Kevin Lemons, Kenny Lewis, this, I mean, so many, of course, the A-listers, but all my indie artists, choir directors, like all of them have been a part of, of course, they're older than me. Most of them are older than me. David Walker, E. Yeah. Chase. Um, I have just kind of gleaned from them, just kind of watching um, more than anything, how they lead. How, how they lead. Because um, I, I think singing is actually the easy part. It is. How they lead, how they lead has been something I've paid attention to. And um, Nashville, the, I don't think Nashville kind of has a sound per se, but I think what we do have, what I've been able to produce has been something that is our own. Yeah. So I, so I can't really say I built something from other artists. And then now, to be honest, I don't really listen to gospel. Not unless somebody's saying, hey, bro, check out my stuff, you know, post this for me. 
but I usually kind of stay in an open space when it comes to creating yes. just to make sure I'm staying true to what we have. Cause I think everybody thinks that all the choirs have to bond all the choirs and that's not it. <laughs> so I try to make sure we kind of stay pretty versatile. And I, I thank God for people like, um, well, somebody specific. Um, Oh, and, I'm gonna bring up Kenny Lewis again. Kenny Lewis is in Chicago. Mm-hmm. It's about maybe 30 of them, but they sing like BGVs. Yeah, yeah. They can sing anything, you know, and seeing them do that makes me, reminds me that I'm in the right vein as well because people want versatility and they want a squall too, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I, um, I like stuff like that as far as me singing. Be Slade. Okay, okay. Genius, genius, hands yep. down. Absolutely. Hands down. Um, Mally Music, Samo. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many people. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of some gospel. Uh, Jonathan Nelson, Jason Nelson. I mean, just people that I could just sit and go, wow. You know, and I, I don't set myself up as a singer, singer, but mm-hmm. I do have those that kind of play into how I. I think I'm a safe singer. Yeah. I'm yeah. Keep you there and that's it, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Well that that definitely aids in your commercial success. It doesn't pigeonhole you really. Mm-hmm. And all the artists that you named are master classes by themselves. Like Facts. for various yes. reasons. And I'm I love that you said Jonathan in there. <laughs> <laughs> I I love Jason Nelson's singing. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Nelson's singing is is something else for me. Like it's, it's and different. Jonathan is very sneaky vocally. Yeah, he will pop some stuff on you. Be like sing. Like, yes. like, I, yes. and I love that about him. Like I feel like he keeps his tricks for when he needs them. Yeah, and, and I forget how 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 large his range is. It's just like oh my god. Yeah, yeah. God do not to give me a lot of range because if I have, I wouldn't shut up. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm blessed to have been a part of his his um brand his mm-hmm. his sound. Like yes, ma'am. I, I I get teased all the time. It's like, well, I don't I don't want you to come and vocal produce for us because you're going to give us have us sound like Jonathan Nelson. Well, that's gonna go wherever. Yeah. Oh, because. I'm in there. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, we were a part of that. Yeah. And that's amazing. That is amazing. So I took a listen to your body of work today. Okay. Because like you, I really don't listen to gospel music. Yes, ma'am. I have to learn something because we spend a lot of time learning music. Yeah. Or if it's something that's just, you just get, sis, just listen to this, right? So hymns and devotionals was really good i was wow i honestly expected you guys to give me a little bit more ricky dillard or worship and praise i i I don't know why i braced myself for that (laughs) what i heard was totally different wow you gave me worship with some kevin lemons Mm -hmm. (laughs) i was like Oh, so this is what we're doing, which explains to me how you are able to work commercially. Yes, ma'am. Because the bark is fine, and that mm-hmm. place, that's not always necessary in Absolutely. the system space. Yep. And that's why I wanted you a part of this, because you are commercially working. Thank you. That That's amazing. The promise, declarations, and affirmations... I'm going to be listening to that in my meditation time. That's good stuff. So I'm glad to hear you say that because yeah. that was that was exactly what it was designed for. I've never ran with the system. I've kind of just kind of always been my thing, you know, and putting out the promise was so scary. Mm. It was during the pandemic. And I was like, who wants to listen to a record full of ballads? I kept just taunting myself. So I'm a YouTuber and I'm out in this atmosphere a lot. I'm in TikTok a lot. Did you know 
that there was a lane for that already. It just was not in the church world. No. I'm talking about it was, hey, are we putting it out? No, I'm going to wait. No, I'm going to wait. No, I'm going to wait. And it was kind of like, Nate. And it, I just, I was worried that people would not listen. I, I was worried that people would listen and then be like, uh-uh, nope, slow, slow. I, and I was just like, ah. And then when I got ready to release it, I added the element with the pastors mm-hmm. doing a sermonette before the song. That was the last piece. Mm-hmm. And when we finished that, I said, okay, now it's time. And I hear about those songs almost more than anything. You know, um, the hymns record, I listen to it now and cringe because I'm older now. And so I would have did things differently. But my former first lady was diagnosed with breast cancer. And we hosted a benefit. And the Lord told me to grab some hymns and rearrange them. It was wall to wall in there. And as soon as that event was over, everybody was just like, the only thing this is. And I wasn't even thinking that at all. But it was that impactful, and um, we did the record. And the most popular song on that album from YouTube is actually Pastor Sands singing "What a Friend We Have in Jesus," which is my favorite hymn. Yeah, that that hymn probably pulled me out of a lot. I had learned that hymn and made an arrangement, gave it to Pastor Sands, and the rest was history. Like, wow, it's still pops back up viral like every year on FaceTime, I'm, I'm on Facebook. And after that, that record kind of let me know I was in a good spot. Mm-hmm. And um, we were just doing good at just being who we are. And then, of course, The Promise came. I feel like The Promise was a more intimate part of me mm-hmm. um, as a worshiper. Yeah. And so I think that was a good thing for people to meditate and cry. Yeah. <laughs> It's awesome because there are a lot of people, like I'm a person who, and this is controversial, but it's my space. So I can say, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm one of those people who went through deconstruction. Mm. You understand what that means? Yes, ma'am. And deconstruction, while it breaks you down, you always go back to, in my opinion, what your experience was, what your anecdotal experience yeah, Absolutely. Was. So while I was breaking down westernized christianity i never left jesus mm. and it took me back to the feet of yeah and my faith and throughout that process the promise was something that i would have been looking for wow and there are millions of people who have been on the journey that I have been mm-hmm. on for me and still now, who need that. So wow. I want to encourage you in this moment yes, ma'am. to get those nudges to do certain things yes, ma'am. and they are out of the box. That is the Holy Spirit telling yeah, you. Yeah, that's confirmation. To yeah. get on it. I receive that. Be ahead of, of the game. All I receive that. I receive that. I heard that today and I was like, wow. <laughs> something like this is so good. All right. So let's talk music business. Where I'm from in Baltimore, we um we have a we have a strong tight-knit community. Mm-hmm. We are a bit temperamental people, and I think every region has their spirits or things that they just contain mm-hmm. with. So uh, lack of self-confidence, self-esteem, crabs in a barrel, all that. We deal with all of that there. Gotcha. But our music community really is strong. And the, the older people have it on lock. The younger people are getting it. The people in the middle, like, mm-hmm. we're just trying to make sure that we hold it all together. Yes, ma'am. How do you focus on keeping a strong music community together? Um that it seems to be pockets of people mm-hmm. as opposed to a merging of everything together. Mm-hmm. So how do you keep your music community strong here in this region? So I try my very best to make everything that I am attached to or involved with open to everyone mm-hmm. um, to be a part or to experience. Um, and I do this often. If I get a call about 
oh, there's a gig that we're doing for April. And I told my choir, hey, this gig, April, this is how much you're paying. If you can go, put your name in. I'm asking you guys first mm-hmm. before I ask, you know, the public. And I do that on purpose to let people know that this isn't a me thing. Although, you know, community choirs are exclusive, but that's kind of not what we've we've created. Um, but I try to make sure that everyone just kind of feels even okay, and equal. Okay. Um, I think the lack of community is due to lack of identity. Wow. So it's hard to gather people in a in a in one room who when only five of us know who we are. You know, and so if you got fifty other people who singing this, trying this, doing this, that didn't work, I'm gonna try this, then it's it gets really flooded and it's it, it's kind of hard. And I hate that it's like that, but some people are still finding themselves musically. And unfortunately, some people have only experienced community in a church setting. Yep. Okay. And so that's good and bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they yeah. most of the time they take the bad first and think that's what the community is. And they miss out on endless opportunities just from, it's, it's, it's a lot. And I think Nashville has gotten better over the years. Um, and of course, in some settings, a lot of things are personality driven. Mm-hmm. But you know who you are, and you know who you, who your crew is, that's kind of how it is. That's we're, ge- we're getting there. We're getting there. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's good to hear. Cause mm-hmm. I, and I guess I'm, I'm biased in my opinion because where I'm from, I'm at a certain space in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to find my way. That part. I'm, I'm yeah. it. You need to link with those that know. Mm-hmm. You know, I happen to know the players and be <laughs> one of the players. I'm a connector. Yes, ma'am. But I know who I am and I never feel slighted or I always reach back mm-hmm. and try to help others. And everybody's not. You yes, know, ma'am. Mm-hmm. into it because like you say they may not know who they are mm-hmm. I see who they are <laughs> yeah and I can help them get to where I think they want to be absolutely it's mm-hmm. really, really good to know that and- I think people don't even realize what they say when they say community it's plural it's not you and what you like and what you think like those components are there but you've got to have a village of people to see hey what can you do what can i do what do we have in common what you know and it i'm it's coming it's slow yeah but it's coming coming. it's coming (laughs) that's good to know i i'm also interested in you um you and others um Mm -hmm. doing other things and being on certain boards and sitting at certain tables i was amazed to see a gospel music publishing company organization here mm-hmm. and not one person of color one. that's weird to me yeah but <laughs> i think if those creatives kind of uh flex mm-hmm. other skills and get to mm-hmm. other and just broadening your your scope with that i really think that community can happen a little yes, bit i agree that is amazing. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give someone who is just starting? I, I'm a I'm a mentor. Like mm-hmm. I really want to see people grow. I was fortunate enough to be in a space where I was groomed in church. I really was mentored mm-hmm. in church. And then when I got in the industry, singing with Jonathan Nelson all those years, when I was ready to branch out and do something else, mm-hmm. I talked to my leader. Mm-hmm. They didn't start missing gigs to be on the order. Okay. Because I, I was <laughs> and I sat down and talked to my brother and let him know what I wanted to do. And when he saw I was serious, he actually put me on my first major paid gig. Travel, mm. honorarium, hotel, yeah. like the whole now. He did that for me. And I also have permission to use his name wherever it can open. Ooh-wee. 
and it can open a door. So these are the kind of things that I try to like tell people. This is how these are the things that you need to do. We gotta post that part. You gotta post <laughs> all of that, okay? Because yeah. the people don't know. People, people, people don't know that th- there is a right way to do it. Yes. Period. Like there's just and some of the things that people I've seen people do, I literally ask myself, who raised you? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. What like but what you just said is golden. People need to know, like it's and it's not that it's not that your leader, even if he would have said no, it wouldn't have been him blocking or but just that having the conversation yes. is what matters. And when a person believes in you and see that you have been faithful, you yeah. have been loyal, you have been the work, it's so easy to say, hey, go do this for me in right. my absence. Or you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. Oof, yeah. And, and when you're serious about the work and when you take time to learn the mm-hmm. My my brother and I, we are iron sharp as iron. He calls yeah. sometimes for some things. Mm-hmm. And I call him sometimes for some things. Yes, we got about five minutes left. But just tell somebody, like, if they really interested, especially choir masters or people who want to have a choir, whether it's in industry or mm-hmm. whether it's in church, just some core values that, a couple of core values that they need to have. My number one is... Be true to yourself. That's that's literally the only thing people want. I don't think people want uh, of another version of Todd Trigger or another version of Jonathan Nelson. We we like them right. the originals, you know. Follow what you see, and not what you see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Follow what you see and not what you see, and what you see is what you wake up to every day. Right. Yeah. You get up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you look at that's what you don't follow what you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that just that makes the road easier. I when I realized that I did not have to do it the way that it's been done, mm-hmm. you couldn't tell me a thing. <laughs> my my choir was like, what are we doing? I'm like, we're doing that because we can. Like yes. no one's saying that we can't. Right. Once you find your niche and find your thing, stick to it and do what you need to do to get better. Yeah. Get better and be better. And most of all, be kind. Be nice. Be nice. Oh man. That, be nice. That's probably that'll keep you working the longest. That's that's important. And I've worked with people with a C average piece of talent. <laughs> but they were kind. Yeah. They were on time. They did not have um a haughty attitude. You know, like it's all about character. And they're it's, all working. Yes, it's all about character. Character is more important than some of the music. I'm telling the music is the easy part. Absolutely. It's the other tools that, that make it, you know, make it worth it. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Nate, it's <laughs> so great talking to yes, you. Yes, ma'am. I'm really glad we got a chance. Yes. To connect. And we need to connect some more. Yes. Definitely need to connect some more. I'll have another evening. <laughs> Tell us, tell us about that real quick, and then we'll- yes. Uh, well, for the last few months, we've been doing a series, uh, back to the choir stand, and so we'll go to a local church and invite two church choirs and two community choirs, and it's old school A and B selection. We in and out, but that that community alone has been amazing. And so the next installment is going to be Pentecost Sunday, and I did a Nate Bean and Friends choir. Okay. And it was so dope. It was so dope. And so I think I'm going to pull that one again. Well, you are definitely building community. I, yes, I <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Everybody. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Nate Bean. He is choir master of Nate Bean and Forgiven here in Nashville. And we will be back again with yes. the artist. But thank you so much, Nate. You're so welcome.